how can we increase the number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander doctors in Australia? I'd like to share my thoughts in the next video. Hello YouTube, I'm Anthony Llewellyn, I'm the Career Doctor. I'm here to help you manage your medical career here on YouTube. Next week is NAIDOC week here in Australia. NAIDOC week celebrations are held across Australia each July uh, to celebrate the history, culture and achievement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. NAIDOC is celebrated not only in Indigenous communities but by Australians from all walks of life. This year's NAIDOC theme is Voice Treaty Truth and it's important that we remember in the European settlement of Australia, there were no treaties, no formal settlements, no compacts ever made. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people did not give up the land, it was taken away. Uh, and that's gonna remain a continuing source of dispute. Uh, and in fact, Australia is one of a few democracies around the world which still does not have any formal treaty or treaties in place or other arrangement um, with its indigenous minority population. Another important truth is that in the last 200 years of Australian history, is about the contribution of hospitals and health services that they've made to the marginalisation, the discrimination and the traumatising of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Just like all other government institutions, hospitals in Australia have not traditionally been considered safe places for Aboriginal people to be in. Now we've been making efforts recently to make our health services and our hospitals more culturally aware and respectful, but a key problem remains that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people remain underrepresented in numbers of people that are actually employed and work in these health services. So I wanted to talk about this situation and share some things that I've learned about the situation, having done a bit of research around it in the last few years. So I want to talk about the number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander doctors currently progressing through the Australian system. I also want to share a few ideas for improvement, none of which are completely my own original ideas, some of which are actually now being adopted and others which ought to be considered in my opinion. And I also wanted to talk about why fairness in medical training and job selection is rubbish without having an equity or diversity agenda. So according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics in 2016, uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people represent about 2.8% of the Australian population. Yet in 2018, only 2.2% of the total enrolments in Australian medical schools were for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. And for the previous year, 2017, only 1.4% of those students graduating from the same medical schools were Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander students. So compare this situation with New Zealand, which has a treaty by the way, where 19.4% of enrolments in New Zealand medical schools went to Maori people in 2018. The Maori population of New Zealand is about 15%. And New Zealand is apparently on track to actual hit parity in its overall Maori medical workforce in the not too distant future, which is impressive. But let's not be too hard on the medical schools here in Australia because of all the institutions involved in medical education and training in Australia, they are probably actually doing the best and working the hardest. I had the pleasure to work in this role a few years ago where I liaised with the Australian Indigenous Doctors Association to do a range of things, including strengthening the pipeline from medical school into the hospital system, uh, as well as looking at how to help Aboriginal doctors in New South Wales with their career development post-graduation. The number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island doctors actually taking up specialty training in Australia is far worse than it is for medical school entry or even graduation. And it's really in, only in the last few years that the health services and the colleges have taken any active role in addressing this issue. So imagine this situation, if you will. In one year, 20 out of the 1,000 approximate medical graduates in New South Wales, so 2%, are Aboriginal medical graduates, a figure that is already below the New South Wales state population of 2.9%. Two years later, let's say four of these 20 Aboriginal doctors apply for basic physician training with the College of Physicians, which is one of the biggest colleges in Australia. Let's say two years later, four of these Aboriginal doctors apply for one of 200 basic physician training positions in New South Wales, amongst 500 doctor applicants in total. Let's say two of those four Aboriginal doctors are accepted into training. That's a hit rate of 50% compared to the other rest of the cohort, which is 40%. So that's better, right? Yet the problem is only 1% of those trainees coming from 2% at medical school graduation are now working towards becoming a physician trainee. So the problem with not having enough Aboriginal medical students entering a medical school, graduating at medical school, then being able to enter into specialty training just becomes worse as we flow through the system. 
So whilst I made these figures up, but based on a bit of reality in my knowledge of the system, and they're probably not too far off. So the problem is Australia has no cohesive plan to achieve parity in its medical workforce. In 2014, only 0.3% of the overall medical workforce in Australia was comprised of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander doctors. And it's probably not gotten much better than that since. So for my Australian viewers, you will have hopefully worked out by now why we need to put more effort into both encouraging Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to study medicine, as well as help them get through the various steps of medical school and specialist training and other aspects of the training continuum. And for my international audience, you'll hopefully gain a small understanding about the importance of being culturally aware as a doctor here in Australia. But some of you may be still wondering why it is that we need to make special efforts for certain population groups to gain access to medical training spots or certain medical jobs or medical schools. So you may be saying to yourself, but surely if the process is transparent, then everyone has an equal chance, right? Well, first of all, the process isn't always fair and transparent 100% of the time. But even if it was, the process of selection should be about the best outcomes, not the best inputs. Workplace diversity encapsulates the idea that the workplace should reflect the general makeup of greater society. The concept of diversity in the workplace is an important one because historically organisations and institutions didn't value diversity. When we think about diversity, we often think of certain demographic groups, such as gender, race, or lower socioeconomic status. However, diversity is much broader and more inclusive as a concept. Workplace diversity is not just about providing an equal opportunity to participate in the workplace. It can actually bring benefits to the organisation. Research has shown that diversity at all levels of an organisation can be a key driver of productivity, creativity and growth. Researchers in the social sciences and mathematics have demonstrated that groups of diverse, intelligent people are actually better at solving problems than a group of best problem solvers. There are a number of reasons to support an increase in the diversity of successful medical students and medical trainees, especially those who have been traditionally underrepresented in both undergraduate and postgraduate training programs. Research internationally shows that such students are more likely to work in underserviced areas, that patients tend to prefer physicians of their own or similar background, that the students display greater respect for difference and better team performance in schools and the workforce, uh, and that these students help broaden perspectives in medical research overall. So my next point is probably directed to those of you on selection panels or involved in making decisions about selecting people into medical schools and training programs and jobs. And the first step I think for you should be to make sure that diversity is an active discussion for your committee and to seek to consider evidence of how well you've been doing so far in your diversity agenda. And this will obviously depend on where the program is situated and I'm obviously not just talking about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people now, I'm talking about male, female, I'm talking about non-binary, I'm talking about certain minor, other minority groups. I'm talking about rural medicine as well. Some members of the selection committee may believe that if the selection process itself is fair and open to all and there are no overt signs of discrimination, then this should give sufficient evidence of there being what's called a level playing field. But I think it's important to challenge such notions as the idea assumes that all candidates come to that selection from the same starting point. We know that some candidates have had to go through many more barriers to get to that point in time. These candidates arguably actually have more potential than the ones that haven't had to face so many challenges. So finally, some strategies for increasing the participation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in medical schools and medical training programs. I think the first thing would be have more than one approach. I think the next thing would be to think about developing relationships in the spirit of partnerships with local Indigenous health leadership groups and organisations. Maybe your program actually has to advocate more broadly for initiatives around things like closing the gap to demonstrate that you're fully committed to looking at Aboriginal health issues. Maybe you can actually involve Indigenous people in your actual process of selection or reviewing applications or something like that. Perhaps consider about whether you're actually providing support and development for Aboriginal leaders as doctors in your actual program. Are they getting the opportunity to be part of the training group or the other leadership groups in the program? Are you actually implementing specific Indigenous health curriculum for all trainees to make sure that everyone knows that this is an important issue? Have you done basic things like review your web pages and your other documentations to ensure that if you are doing good things around Aboriginal health or supporting and mentoring Aboriginal students or trainees, so that's actually visible and out there and 
can be found quite easily. Maybe you need to do some outreach to local Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities to let them know about your good program. And are you providing specific mentoring to Indigenous trainees? If there's any sort of financial assistance available, are you highlighting that? Maybe you could actually incorporate a, specifically a question about Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander health as part of your selection process to send a good song, strong signal that you're taking it importantly. And then we can always identify positions for Aboriginal trainee doctors and you see this being done at the college level and the medical school entry level. And it's also possible to adjust our weighting or ranking uh, to take into account someone's Aboriginal background. So there you have it, that's why it's important to consider specific initiatives for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to work within medicine. As always, I hope you found these videos helpful. If you liked what you heard or saw, leave a like below. If this triggered a bit of a comment for you, please leave one of those below. And if you're enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications. Happy NADOC week next week, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.